Good evening and welcome to the March 14th of 2019. I want to give you this clear flag of the United States of America and the two republics which will sustain us. So as you can see, we just have a very short uh, uh, agenda tonight um, because we are going to have a budget workshop after. So therefore, we have just the just one public input session. We'll have that at the beginning. Um, and I'd like to share with the public statement. The first public input session is a 21 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. And we will not have the second input tonight. Um, each speaker will give his or her name, address, and the reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning Subject matter that falls under the law regarding the executive session, for example, matters involving personnel, cannot be made during public input. We as a community pledge to treat each other as we wish to be treated. We pledge to seek understanding when there may be disagreement. Regardless of outcomes or opinions, we pledge to move forward with respect. This is a time for comments or and or questions for the board. But please be aware that some questions may not be able to be answered at this meeting. Thank you. Do we have public input at this time? Hi, my name is Pam Pip Sarah. I'm a resident of Lebanon. I'm also a teacher at Normal Middle School. I promise not to cry, but it's not too, sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know, with the speed of my 25th year in the district, the morale of Normal Middle School is extremely low. I was in attendance at the school board meeting held on Saturday, March 2nd, when it was announced that there will be four teaching positions and three ed tech positions cut from the regular education budget, just in my building. In addition, I was informed at the end of the day today that my program, which supports students with behavioral challenges in the regular ed setting, mind you that not special education students, is also being cut due to being funded by ESTA grants, which are no longer available. This now means there are five teach at least five teachers in four ed techs losing their current roles and no in school. Imagine how staff feel not knowing if they, one, don't even have a job next year, or two, will be reassigned to a position that they may not have applied for when they were originally hired. I was told today that I will be reassigned to a position that I have no intention of wanting to be in. I know there are staff actively looking for jobs, hoping to secure employment elsewhere in the very near future. We also had a sixth grade ELA teacher resign last week, as well as our planning room staff member, who requested a transfer out of our building, who also left last week, because her role became primarily an in-school suspension room position due to significant behaviors at our building. She didn't sign up for that one. It saddens me that we are going to lose many great staff. Given the current state of education, MSAD 60 has been struggling to fill vacant positions that the past couple of years, and we are seeing less and less people applying to teacher preparation classes. So I do not understand why teachers and ed techs who work directly with students daily, seven to eight hours a day, and are typically the lowest paid staff of the first positions to be eliminated from the budget. I would be happy to meet with any school board member in the future if you have any questions or if you need any clarification of my role in Nova Middle School. Thank you. Other public input? Hello, my name is Karen McCormick, and this is my 41st year of teaching the dead in Zed 60. Public speaking is not one of my strengths, but I feel this is important, so I'm willing to step out of my comfort zone. I have experienced several times what Sharon Specialist does to his school. Schools benefit when they have their specialists that remain in their buildings full time. Being in one building gives us the ability 
to collaborate with our peers for further learning opportunities for our students. We understand that looking at our class load, it appears that we are, have available times and consolidation is the right answer. What isn't apparent is what, how we fill those times now and are eager to service our students in a variety of ways in the future. We have built connections with our communities. Each specialist organizes events that bring our communities into our schools. If we are servicing multiple buildings, these connections will be affected. Having a more flexible schedule allows us to use our talents to service struggling students that need an early intervention, an extension for those that need to excel, or an incentive for students meeting academic and behavioral goals. Please take into consideration how consolidating conditions will not only affect what we can offer our students during the day, but also how it will affect our community connections. If consolidation does happen, we as specialists hope that we will have some involvement in the decisions we make. Thank you. Thank you. Other input? Good evening, my name is Jeremy Kasten. I live in Berwick, a parent of three children in the uh, MSAD 16 school system. Uh, I was here more than once a year ago, uh, budget season, as I think uh, a lot of folks tend to show up around this time, and I promised then that I would, if not attend meetings, pay attention. And I will tell you that when I came here a year ago, and my concern was for Excel specifically, as um, we were, you were trying to, to make the budgets work. Uh, I have uh, not necessarily attended every meeting, but I have watched every meeting. And um, I came here a year ago believing in some ways that perhaps there was some um, funny business or conspiracy or complications surrounding the budgeting process and the school process, and, and how we serve all these students. And of course, as a parent, I'm thinking about my children and their needs, and how they can succeed and come up from kindergarten through 12th grade and go on to have a life and a career, hopefully stay in Berwick and live on the farm, but whatever that's going to look like, and I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. What I've learned is that this is an arduous, difficult process, and that one of the reasons that my family moved to Maine and made Berwick our home is because the values of this place tend to focus on equity, they focus on uh, fiscal responsibility, they focus on um, caring for each other. I've never known so many people who volunteer and make, make suppers at churches, um, and I love that. I have also listened to a lot of folks over the last year come up in front of you and speak about the budget over and over and their taxes. And I recognize that we live in a state with more old people than any other state. And that is part of why I moved here too. That being said, my gasoline, my electricity, my bananas, there is nothing that has not gone up. We can't get somebody to fix a dishwasher for three months in Berwick. That's the world we live in. And to continue to talk about budgets and not increasing doesn't make any sense to me. And, and every parent I talk to feels that way. And you have a lot of parents with a lot of kids who now, because we don't go to school in a one-room schoolhouse, are forced to um, have individualized experiences in our schools. And you all have worked so hard to meet those needs. You all, all of the, it's incredible to me how we are making this work, patchwork, and, and with people's passions, and certainly not getting paid enough. I don't know how you are going to get where you need to get, but I, I know I'm going to wrap it up. 20 seconds. <laughs> I wish I could say, what you should do is you should cut sports. Because you know what? It's not going to 
move the meter, and we need to bring the scores up, and, but I don't know, I have no idea where the cut should come, but I, I know they always come from the arts, and you know, Excel is something I'm very concerned about, and so I'm here to say, it is so important. If somebody made a career, a living, by being a weird theater kid and an artist, you know, there is so much of that in this world, and, and we have to respect it and take care of it. Please, take care of Excel, take care of the arts, and take care of everybody. And if it means that people have to raise their taxes, that's what it is, in my opinion. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Mallory Prince. Um, I'm a resident of Lebanon, and I currently have a fifth grade student at the Lebanon Elementary School and an incoming kindergartner next year. Ooh, that's so um, so I am currently, I've been working in the Noble School District since 2008, and I currently serve um, as the physical education teacher for the Lebanon Elementary School, which has 147 students, and the Hanson Elementary School, which has a population of 258. So combined, I see 405 students per week. Um, and so, which this means, I teach 24 uh, class sessions, and I also assist in adaptive lessons that we call Week for Life with the OT and PT at our school. And I have six duties a week. Um, five of the six I really enjoy, because it's like very social, but <laughs> um, each day I travel back and forth between two buildings to teach lessons throughout the day. While I'm teaching in the Hanson Cafeteria Gymnasium, the LES gym is being used for chorus band and other school activities and programs. When I'm teaching at the LES school, the students at the Hanson School are eating lunch in the cafeteria gymnasium. Um, the physical education curriculum is a state and a national standards-based driven curriculum. The physical education team um, has worked each year and week to review and revise these lessons and meet the needs of our students. At the Levin School, revision and adaptation is taken even further. Um, being that it's the only buildings in the district with limited and shared space um, since it's a cafeteria gymnasium, both in the LES and the Hanson Elementary School. But not just that, due to the calf size in general, and then as it's used for storage for chairs, desks, tables, equipment, and dual purpose, um, there's really a lack of space. And my Hanson storage office was actually just moved out of the gymnasium and moved down the hall by the office, which there's not enough space to store equipment there. So it's actually all stored at the LES Elementary School in a shared space as well that I share with the town. Therefore, it has to be locked, unlocked, and relocked every time I go in and out of it. Um, and this is also located down the hall from the gymnasium as well. So. Um, as you can see, there's not much flexibility due to the restrictions on the equipment and space and all its usage. Um, despite these limitations within the Lebanon PE program, students are exposed to new ways to live a lifelong healthy fitness, as in new recess activities, sports games, nature rocks, rock climbing, snowshoeing, just to name a few. Um, the PE program also works with sports and athletic programs, the PTO, and other experts where they come in and help with collection of new equipment, obtain <coughs> grants and fundraisers, such as lacrosse, a bigger ball pit, pedometers for each student, K through five, mats, fitness gram equipment, and sensory pack recently through a grant for LES school. 20 seconds. Okay. <laughs> so I understand that due to budget, um, due to the budget needs, and there needs to be adjustments made, but when looking at the budget and the space and the schedule, I'm hoping that you can look to the experts and the professional in our spaces and in our fields and consider our dedication experiences and our knowledge and help that we can provide to be a part of the solution. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Erin Dolly and I am the music teacher in the Lebanon Elementary School. I'm a Lebanon resident and taxpayer with a son currently attending the Lebanon schools. I have lived in Lebanon for most of my life and attended the Lebanon schools myself, where my mother was also a teacher. Many of my current students are the children of my former classmates. All this to say my roots are in Lebanon and I am highly invested in the students, the community, and the best interest of the town. 
My intent in speaking to you this evening is to provide context for the impact that our music program has, not only on our own school, but community, but as a feeder program to the middle and the high schools. The position of the music teacher serves approximately 405 students currently enrolled in our schools. The general music instruction for the current academic year, as well as for the 24-25 school year, is a standards-driven curriculum that is built around the main visual and performing arts standards. Students have music class for 40 minutes once per week, during which they are instructed, assessed, and graded. Adaptive <laughs> music classes are being taught to our current life skills students once a week, with plans in place for an additional life skills classroom at our schools for the 24-25 school year, based on the projected CDS caseloads. The general music teacher role is also responsible for the planning, preparation, communication, logistics, and direction of all of the grade level concerts. There are four grade level concerts per year. Partly by nature and partly by design, these concerts provide and encourage a high level of community engagement. The families of an entire grade level are in the school at one time, making contact with each other, grade level teachers, teachers and administrators. For some, this is one of the only times that they visit the school during the course of the school year. In Lebanon, concerts are also commonly used as a teaching tool for service to the community, with students and families working together to give back to programs that benefit our students, such as the MSAB 60 Backpack Program and the Continuum Arts Collective. In addition to general music, this position also directs the chorus. 48% of the population at LES is currently enrolled in chorus. This ensemble is a local techniques class that offers three full chorus performances through the school year. Members of this course also perform the national anthem at district sporting events and will have the opportunity to represent our school in the newly created Main State Elementary Honors Festival. There is no denying the statistics that many of us have heard over the years. Music makes you better at math and literacy. Schools with music education program have a higher attendance rate and so forth. The International Association for the Evaluation of Educational Achievement says, the schools that produce the highest academic achievement in the United States today are spending 20 to 30% of the day on the arts, with special emphasis on music. What is offered by these programs is vital to the success of our students and thereby our community. I would welcome any and all of you to come spend time in our music room in Lebanon, attend a concert, or speak directly with me anytime you would like. I would very much look forward to working together to build the brightest possible future for our deserving students. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other public input? Hello, my name is Heather Lorenzo. I am a parent of a second grade um, daughter, President Burrick. I have a second grader and a ninth grader in the district. And I just want to say we have the most amazing teachers and staff, and we are so blessed to have everything we have at Noble. Um, I've also been a kindergarten teacher for almost 20 years. And when I started teaching in 2000, I never thought teachers would have to face what they have to face every day to go in and be told to be better, do more, win less. Um, and teachers are ramping up for one of the busiest times of the year to try to get the kids through the end of the year. And it's awful to have to worry if they're gonna have a job to come back to. So as a parent, I would like to know what we can do because we support the school and we don't want teachers. We have the best teachers in the district. We've been in this for 15 years and every teacher we have had it for all of these things. So, just let us know what we can do and we'll help. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Other public input? Hi, I'm Gwen Derrick Demi. Um, I live in North Berwick. I'm the mom of a kindergartner, a back. Um, she was in North Berwick Elementary School. Um, I've taught in the district for about 16 years at LES, at North Borough Elementary, and most currently at the middle school. And all I wanted to do was to invite you into our schools. If you want a primary resource, we're here. Please come in if you have questions, if you want to know where those numbers will affect directly, it's right here. So our doors are open. I know Josh Saber has already been in my classroom, has met with my team. Anytime you want to reach out with an email, I'm more than happy to arrange that at our school at the middle school or any of the other schools. I'm also a union rep for the middle school, so I can connect with union members that way too. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Is there any other public input? Hi everybody, and I'm Sharon Taylor. I'm the uh, I live in North Berwick, and I am the uh, high school bus district librarian. So I have a really good bird's eye view of what's happening uh, throughout the district in the different libraries and <coughs> in the schools. And I have to stand with the people that have stood here before you and just say, we have got some terrific people here, and I know you have a hard job. I know you do. I just hope that you can get really, really creative and find a way to to not go after the frontline people. Thanks. Thank you. Other public input? We will move on to number three. Approval for the one next time. We have the state competition. So typically when there's the overnight um, event that occurs, the board needs to approve it if it's something that is, is relatively new. Um, we do have a couple of trips that go over a year or two, like the Washington trip, so we don't bring that necessarily forward for permission. But this is um, a unique experience. So Principal Duport's going to speak to that, and um, it's coming up pretty fast, which is why we added it in the agenda item. Um, Right. Absolutely. So, um, and more good news. So, this is the public welcome. So, last weekend, our one act play um, students. So, we had uh, 21 students in our cast along with the, the adult director. They um, won our region. So, they are, have the opportunity <coughs> to belong to the state competition. So, there were a number of local schools last weekend at Marshwood. Um, our students earned first place, and so they earned the right to go to the state competition. Now, as Ms. Bobe said, it is a very tight turnaround to so go from last weekend to a week from Friday. So essentially, what's getting close to next weekend is the state competition, and we find ourselves as being the part of this school from um, Camden Hills Regional High School that qualified for the state competition. Um, the other tricky component in this is that our students need to be present and on Friday, the 22nd, for a tech experience. So they take the stage, set up all of their tech. All schools are required to do a one-hour tech setup to make sure everything's set up on their stage. And then our students will be presenting on Saturday afternoon their play. So the, the problem we have is, um, according to Google Maps, it's about two hours and 14 minutes um, back and forth. Our students are required, so there are some Friday night productions, and I, and I think it's good, although when you're the school traveling the furthest, you'll yeah. But all schools are required to be present for all, each of the nine performances. So performances wrap up at nine o'clock, and then they get feedback till about 9.30, quarter of 10. That would put our students home um, very, very late, traveling you know, south very late that evening and then needing to get up early the next morning because the first round, the, the first presentation of their play for other schools starts at noon time. So our students would need to leave prior to 9 a.m. the next morning. So it would be an extremely quick turnaround. I've sent a preliminary note out to families saying, hey, if we're able to get approval, would families be interested slash willing in, in us being able to, to work together to provide overnight accommodations to keep students off the roads? So I think the scary part for me is they'll get back here to Noble High School at 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Many of them then have 30 to minutes or more to get home from here. Um, so it is a late night. So what we're looking for is, is hopefully a thumbs up that we're allowed to pursue um, an overnight opportunity. We have the 21 students our director, the bus driver, we have three families that have expressed interest that they would be willing to participate as yeah, chaperones as well and stay with the students and keep. So I think we would have very, very good numbers for a trip that size, and I think it would, it would allow our students to sort of put their best foot forward for that state competition. Um, and I think I would just add, kind of cool part, it's always nice to be able to brag, we are the only school from York County um, that was selected. So you have to get to Cumberland County before you have any other participants. So it's always nice. You know, a lot of times at here at the high school level, we talk about our, our Stanford Regional Technical Center counterparts and our other folks in New York County. So we're the only ones making that trip, which is pretty cool. So that is my question for you this evening. What time would they wrap up on Saturday? 
Saturday will still be a later evening. Uh, Saturday will be late, um, but I do think getting students to all wake up in their own bed for Sunday morning has a lot of value for starting on Monday. But yeah, it'll be similar. I think it'll wrap up around 9 o'clock. We'll be looking at an 11.30 back at Noble High School. Are performances open to the public? They absolutely are, yes. Yeah, anyone willing to make the trip to Hampton Regional High School, like you can perform at 4.30 on Saturday. You could leave here by 1 and probably be home by 9 p.m. So, <laughs> short day, short day. How do you find a place for that? Do you know where they all stand? Yeah, I mean, Hampton and Rockland um, is currently tentatively, I said, if this goes as expected, I'm going to call them. In about 10 minutes. <laughs> 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 they are fully call for me right now. So. It's very good news. Yeah. It's very good. Very cool opportunity. Good so, I move to approve the ownership of the students in line. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.